Discover the top 10 security measures in place to protect the iconic White House in Washington, D.C. From advanced surveillance systems to secret emergency protocols, learn about the intricate security infrastructure that keeps the president safe. Explore the behind-the-scenes systems and protection measures that ensure the safety of one of the most important buildings in the United States. Stay tuned to uncover the secrets of the White House security that you probably didn't know about. The true extent of the protection at the White House has never been and should never be disclosed to the public, but there are certain things that cannot be hidden and others that, thanks to the passage of time and certain events, have been discovered. This house was conceived by George Washington and built in 1790 under the direction of Irish architect James Hoban. From then on, it has undergone a vast number of changes and updates, making it today a true bunker in plain sight and one of the safest presidential residences on the planet. This house is famous around the world for being precisely the residence of the President of the United States. So it makes sense to think that being the home of the President and his family, it has a high security system that is foolproof, with security measures that are even exaggerated but necessary. From missiles that shoot down any aircraft to an underground bunker capable of withstanding nuclear attacks, sit back and get ready to learn about 10 security systems and measures at the White House. Sometimes the best defense comes from simple things like a strong and well-thought-out fence. The fence surrounding the White House is undoubtedly the first and most essential security measure a place of such importance must have. Erected for the first time in 1801 by President Thomas Jefferson, this part began as a wooden hedge, and in 1833, it was updated to a heavy wrought iron fence running along the top of a stone wall. But things have changed a lot in the past 200 years, and now this is a gigantic 3.3 meter high steel fence with solid concrete bases. The current fence is clearly made to prevent people from entering, but more essentially to prevent any vehicle, regardless of its size, from crossing. It is said that even trucks at full speed crashing into the White House fence would not be able to destroy or cross it. During the protests of June and July 2020 in Washington, D.C., a new fence with concrete barriers was built to further prevent the passage of vehicles. The fence is now almost 3 meters high, and its design was planned with engineers and members of the White House Secret Service. The magic of a secure place is detecting irregularities or intruders as quickly as possible to neutralize them, and the White House is one level above that. Every inch of the perimeter of the more than 7 hectares around the White House is surrounded by infrared lasers that detect even the smallest threat. These are not the lasers seen in old spy movies that are challenged like a game of limbo, but invisible lasers to the human eye that cover absolutely everything from the ground the sky, and even underground. With that level of security, the Secret Service can detect even a small squirrel wandering around. In addition to this measure that to some extent can fail due to weather conditions, the White House also has pressure sensors in its gardens, making this system foolproof. In the Oval Office, the President's Office, there are also pressure sensors that allow knowing the exact position of the Commander-in-Chief. This way, even if agents cannot see what is happening in the office, they will be able to know where the president is in case of a rescue operation. There have been many occasions, since the White House's conception when shots have been fired, at the historic house, so the installation of bulletproof glass in the 1950s was a logical step. For example, in 1994, Francisco Martin Duran opened fire on the White House in an apparent attempt to kill Bill Clinton, and incredibly, one of the bullets managed to penetrate the window, but no one was injured. Still, this was a big alarm. The current windows of the White House are typically vulnerable to firearms. Interestingly, in any photo you see of the White House, you will also see countless windows. Moreover, the window of the Oval Office is a direct line to the President who stands with his back to it, and would be the perfect scenario to end him but it is not possible, and they are surely so armored that the Secret Service has the luxury of keeping them like that. On the night of Friday, November 12, 2011, a disturbed young man from Idaho 
Oscar Ramiro Ortega Hernandez, fired at least two shots with a high-powered semi-automatic rifle at the White House, but not even the consecutive shots could break the windows, they only made a few scratches on them. This not only was unsuccessful, but more advanced armoring measures were taken for the windows, so if it was difficult before, now it is impossible. No one has ever revealed the level of armoring of the White House windows or their thickness, but according to Gene Richard, Vice President of Total Security Solutions, who has decades of experience in installing ballistic glass in historic government buildings, he believes the White House probably uses level 8 polycarbonate windows coated with glass. Moreover, he added that it would not surprise him at all if they had something even more resistant that we have never seen. On the other hand, Scott Haddock, president of Clarsen, who provides the White House with these armored glasses, refused to inform the media about the thickness of the crystals, saying, I have products that I cannot talk about or advertise, which is a bit frustrating for me, but my clients would expect me to protect their interests. Following the attacks of September 11, the airspace over the White House is heavily restricted. A radar is mounted on the roof continuously observing the area. If a breach in the restricted airspace is identified, a fighter jet can be deployed within five minutes if necessary. And we would be talking about the best combat jets of the US Air Force, such as the F-22 Raptors and the F-35 Lightning II. There is a radius of about 24 kilometers around the White House in which no aircraft can fly over, except, of course, for the President's helicopter, Marine One. But what measures does the White House have to stop an aircraft? In November 2019, a Twitter user posted images of the missile system that protects the White House and tweeted, the White House was locked down this morning due to a potential violation of the restricted airspace in the National Capital Region. The lockdown has been lifted at this time. What is seen in the image is an unslash TWQ-1 Avenger air defense system, consisting of eight Stinger missiles and a .50 caliber machine gun. The Avenger is a self-propelled surface to air missile system that provides mobile, short-range air defense protection for ground units against cruise missiles, unmanned aerial vehicles, low-flying fixed-wing aircraft, and helicopters. The Stinger missiles it uses are infrared guided and have a range of just over 3 kilometers. The Avenger system is deployed in 19 nations and with the four U.S. military services. However, after analysis, this system was not really on the White House roof, but on the roof of the new Executive Office Building, NEUB, a U.S. federal government office building, right next to the White House. Still, it is very likely that the White House also has its own anti-aircraft systems, and they are surely Avenger systems, but to date, there is no more information about that. When you think of a safe place, the last thing you think of is a place where tours are offered to curious tourists, but not just anyone can easily visit the White House. To receive a tour in one of the safest buildings on the planet, like the White House, one must submit a request at least one to six months before the scheduled visit, but that doesn't even guarantee access. This measure gives the Secret Service the ability and time to conduct background checks on all scheduled visitors. For obvious reasons, the tour is also guided through only some parts of the White House, not all. If you are lucky enough to receive access, all visitors, regardless of whether they are children, elderly, women, or men, must undergo thorough checks before entering. Only personal identification should be carried, and mobile phones, wallets, keys, cameras, and similar objects must stay outside. It is no secret to anyone that the White House is surrounded by Secret Service agents. Both inside and outside the presidential complex, you can find armed agents ready for any eventuality. Agents are in every corner of the house in its gardens, so it is impossible to take a single photo without finding one of them. In 2017, the White House informed the press that the number of agents signed to the president's protection would be doubled following the increasing attacks, which further demonstrates that the president's security is a priority. In the South Lawn and on the White House roof, there are Secret Service and Armed Forces snipers ready to stop any threat, no matter what it is. 
One of the snipers working at the White House anonymously commented to the press, when you're sitting looking through the sight of your rifle, you make sure not to have the president or his family in the line of fire. These agents are also experts in hand-to-hand -hand combat techniques. So, if an intruder manages to enter the White House, Secret Service agents can neutralize them even without their weapons. The president is the most important person in the country, so it makes sense to think that if things get ugly, there is an underground bunker where he can go to stay safe. In emergency events where the president's security is compromised, he can take refuge in the Presidential Emergency Operations Center PEOC. This underground bunker is right below the east wing of the White House and can withstand not only nuclear attacks but any type of attack. This shelter was created during World War II under the administration of Franklin Roosevelt to protect the president in case of an air attack. This ultra-secret room has direct access to the Oval Office and is known to have a conference room, a press room, and a meeting room where the president and his staff can work during emergencies. Since the September 11th attacks, the PIOC has also been used to coordinate emergency operations and hold national security meetings. The existence of this bunker remained secret until 2001 when President George Bush was taken to this place during the September 11th attacks. But the White House also has another bunker known as the National Security Critical Situation Office, where government members can meet in case of a crisis. The exact location of this facility is a secret and not much is known about it, but it is believed to be in an even safer and more reinforced underground location than the Pioch. Finally, from the outside, the White House looks like a single structure mansion, but beneath it, there is a labyrinth of secret tunnels connecting different parts of the presidential complex. One of these tunnels leads to the White House gardens, while another connects the Oval Office with the Pioch. Some tunnels even extend beyond the White House, providing escape routes and access to nearby buildings in case of emergency. These tunnels not only offer a safe way to move around the complex but also allow personnel to enter and exit without being seen. Although the exact details of these tunnels are secret, their existence has been confirmed by various sources and they are a crucial part of White House security. This was another episode of Time Voyager. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave your like and share this content with other enthusiasts of history and international conflicts. See you in the next episode.